Good afternoon and welcome to another scope where we're going to be talking about Present Over Perfect by Shauna Nyquist. Um, I just love this book as you all know and um, I've loved getting the opportunity to share with you some of the my favorite parts and my favorite um, quotes from her and um, parts of the book that really ministered to me. So hope you all are having a great Tuesday and today we're going to be talking about what do you need to burn down in your life and that might sound like a little bit of a weird phraseology but when you hear what I'm gonna to read to you I think it'll make a little bit more sense um, this is from page 142 she said when I think about my life now I think about pig pen from peanuts and how as Charles Schultz drew him he was always surrounded by a cloud of dirt and swirling dust I think that's how I've lived for a long time without knowing it. I thought that the noise and the chaos and the busyness were always somehow finding me, but I couldn't figure out how. What are the chances, I thought? Isn't this funny? But over time, I started to realize that I'm like one of those girls who can't figure out why drama always finds her. She swears up and down she has nothing to do with it, but then you watch her trash talk one girl and flirt with another girl's boyfriend and you realize that even if she doesn't see it, the drama is all her. The chaos is all me too. As much as I don't want to admit it, I create it, am drawn to it, kick it up when things get too quiet because when I'm quiet, I have to own up to the fact that quiet terrifies me, that all my life I've been wrapping myself in noise and chaos the way pig pen is all wrapped up in dust and dirt, and that noise protects me from feeling all the things I don't want to feel. And here's what's crazy. I was so afraid that if I faced the silence, I would find that inside myself, there's simply nothing that I'm hollow like a set of Russian dolls missing the center doll, all shells and no core. Or I thought that what I would find in the silence is weak, crumbling, unable to face life without the swirling blanket of chaos. Instead, around me, every corner, I'm finding that willingness to be fragile actually makes me strong. In the silence, I have found love. I have found love and peace and stillness and gratitude. I used to overwork in order to feel important. What I'm learning now is that feeling important to someone else isn't valuable to, isn't valuable to me the way I thought it was. Feeling connected is very valuable, but feeling helpful to strangers doesn't do it for me anymore. And then Shauna goes on to say, as I've stripped things out of my life, constant traveling, overworking, compulsive activity, I'm finding that my senses are attuned so much more deeply than they've been in years. Music is reaching me with a depth I can't remember since my adolescence and poetry and nature too. And as many of you know, um, with my year of rest, that is what I've discovered too. I have discovered that when there is quiet, even though in the beginning it scared me and I realized how much I was addicted to the hustle and the busyness and I didn't know how to really have quiet. When I got comfortable with the quiet by stripping away all of the crazy and the hustle and the noise and the busy and the chaos, then I was able to really savor life with all of my senses. I enjoy food more. I enjoy music more. I enjoy conversations with friends more. I enjoy the beauty of outside. You guys, last year it was fall and I remember that I didn't even really notice it was fall until all of a sudden it was like all the trees had gone off, the, the leaves were all off the trees. And I was like, I missed it because I was so busy. I never took time to just stop and look at the amazing beauty that was all around me. And so this year, every single day, I have made it a point that when I go outside, number one, to go outside every day, and then number two, to go outside and actually look around. To look around and to see those beautiful leaves and to just enjoy the scenery, to take that time to really enjoy it. Okay, so I told you it was I was going to explain what the whole burn it down thing was about. Well, here it is. She says, what do you need to burn down in your life to make space for a new way of living? 
What commitments, expectations, roles, structures seem immo immovable until you start to move them and find that when you do, everything changes. What do you need to burn down in your life? And you might feel like, there's no way I can't get rid of that. That's super important. I can't say no to that. I've got to do that. But I did the same thing too and I thought, I have to be this busy. And then I really stepped back and said, wait, do I have to or do I have some choice in the matter? And Anna, you said about that it's insensitive to someone who's lost everything in a fire. Well, I think it's just, it's a good phraseology. It's a good phraseology. And I've met people who have lost everything in a fire and they have a very different perspective on life and on what really matters. Because I remember talking to one and she was like, we lost everything basically. And we had no time to be able to go and gather anything up. She's like, but I have my kids. I have my husband. Our family is still intact. And I think that's what's most important. What do I want to look back on my life? Am I clinging to these this busyness and this calendar clutter and these things that don't really, really matter? And losing sight of the most important things, the most important people in my life? What do you need to burn down in your life to make space for a new way of living? She said, in my case, to a certain extent, I followed the path that made sense, that unfolded naturally. I held everyone together because I always had. Only now I had a husband and two kids to hold together too. I worked and worked and pushed and pushed because that's what I knew how to do. And now, instead of hiding in busyness and codependence and pretending that everything's okay, when I live in the silence, it makes me brave. I feel uninsulated, unarmed, and it makes me bold. Because for the first time in a long time, I'm listening to my own voice and desires. I'm articulating my own vision for my life. Addiction to motion or faking or busyness or obsessive eating or obsessive dieting or whatever it is for you builds just a tiny luscious buffer between you and everything. So words that would hurt you when you're stone sober just don't bother you after a glass or two of wine, or after you've lost three more pounds, or as long as chocolate or pizza can keep you company, keeping you safe and distant. But you take away those things and all of a sudden you find many of your relationships very different than you originally believed. You feel everything, everything. It's like wearing glasses for the first time. I was six when I got my first tiny pair and I remember all of a sudden seeing individual blades of grass where previously there was only a bland, cohesive expanse of green. That's how it is when you leave these things behind. Busyness, exhaustion, codependence, compulsive, anything. You can see the cracks and brokenness in your relationships for what they really are. And you realize that you can't move forward the way you have been. That you have to either fix the cracks or let the connection break. Those are the only two real honest ways. And so I've been busy doing both. Re repairing cracks in some and letting others shatter. Which they should have done a long time ago had I not been holding the scraps together. I'm facing myself for the first time in a long time, and I'm beginning to see myself for what I am, right or right and wrong, strong and fragile, all the things, all in one. So I just thought that that was really beautiful. And for me personally, I have noticed that when I sit in that silence and I embrace that silence and I'm okay with the silence and not filling up all the nooks and crannies of my life with busyness and hustle and to-dos and just noise, that I'm able to see more clearly. I was talking about the leaves outside and just seeing the beauty around me, but I'm also able to see more of the brokenness around me. And I'm able to see pieces in my life that are broken. And you guys know, I've talked about how this has been the year of ugly crying for me because I've had to face these broken pieces in my heart, in my past that I never ever really processed and healed from. And I just stuffed them down. And when you stuff broken pieces down really deep, they're still broken and they're going to come out eventually. And so this year, 
they came out. And it's been a beautiful thing for me to embrace them, to accept them, to own them, to say, you know, this is a part of my, my past. This is a part of my story. But I also want to heal from this. I want to turn that brokenness into something beautiful. But I had to have the silence. I had to get brave and burn things down in my life and say no and step away and walk away in order to have that space and have that silence and in order to be able to find that healing. So I just challenge you, really think about what is it in your life that you need to step away from, that you need to walk away from, that you need to say no to, that you need to burn down, that you need to leave. What is it so that you can make space to breathe, to make space to heal, to make space to really soak up the silence and see the beauty all around you.